make your tunnel card extra dimensional by using shaping tools on your die cuts. Coming up next on Catherine Paper Art. Okay, I'm going to make a tunnel card and I'm going to start with a piece of cardstock that measures eight inches long and five and a half inches high. And I'm going to score it, or I have scored it, at every three eighths of an inch um, until I get uh, to the one and seven eighths. So after I do the score at one and seven eighths, then I'm going to score it at six and one eighth inch to make a four and a quarter inch wide card. And then I'll resume scoring at every three eighths of an inch after that. So it looks something like this. You probably can't see it, but I'll go ahead and um, burnish my score lines and be right back. I've gone ahead and burnished my score lines to show you how it looks. And the center panel is the four and a quarter inch panel. So these burnished score lines, now that they've been folded, they form springs. So that when you flatten it down and put it in the envelope, when the recipient pulls it out, it springs open. So I'll go ahead and ink up my background and be right back. So I've inked up my background panel and I'm ready to glue it down. Alternatively, you could just ink up your, you could just ink this up, but I prefer to use a separate panel in case I mess things up. And so, um, These are the colors that I used. I used the Distress Inks in Tumbled Glass, Peacock Feather, Salty Ocean, and Uncharted Mariner. And then I took a shimmer spray and gave it a couple shots. I don't know if you can see that. I can see it anyway, but um, so I'll go ahead and glue that down and be right back. So I colored some cardstock, I inked up some cardstock and made die cuts. And um, I've also started to cut some cardstock springs to keep them lifted from the background. And These will go something like this, and I'll, I'll have some sand in the foreground. Now, it kind of bothers me that um, <laughs> the perspective is off because the waves are going one way, and the sand wouldn't really be on the side of the waves, I guess, unless you were in a cove. But anyway, so that's how that's going to go. So I'll secure these and be right back. Well, I decided that I would rather um, color the sides of my card because I didn't want white showing in my ocean view. So I made a new panel and um, I'm going to um, finish scoring it and burnish it and I'll glue my card panel in and I'll be right back. So I have the uh, honeybee stamps, lovely layers, small seashells, and I am going to shape the rest of these. And I use paper tools and um, I use my bone folder and I use some paper tools for shaping these shells and what I do is I just the more you use these the softer the the shells will get so you may have to 
double up the layer on the back side. So I, I should say, before I get too far into this, I, I colored them up with um, Copic markers and just blended them together. I try to keep them natural looking and I added a little bit of Wink of Stella for just a little bit of shine. And I'll put some Nouveau Crystal Glaze on too. You can see that I've done that on some of these. And these have already been shaped. Um, I can be a little more it could be a little more um, so I just want to get a rounding on my clam shell and um, if I press too hard I'll split it like like I did there but that's okay because I don't think it'll show on the card and just by rubbing on the back of it naturally gives it a curve. I don't know if you can see that. And I'll do the same for my sand dollar. Now the sand dollar, I don't want it to crack down the middle. And it can easily do that. I've never really seen colored sand dollars. I have I have two sand dollars and they're very bleached out. They came from California. I don't know if, if they're natural or if they were from Chinatown or what. My friend brought them back to me one spring break in college. Uh, so I don't know. I've never seen a sand dollar otherwise. In any case, I just got this one puffed up a little bit, if you can see that. If I press too much, I'll, I'll end up kind of creasing it and cracking it, and I don't want to do that. Even putting a second layer on won't help that, so... Just taking it slow is the best way to achieve a sense of realism. Oops. So now for the sun, for the starfish, excuse me, for the starfish, I just take my bone folder and I go straight down the middle of the, I don't know what you call these, spines? I don't know. I just go straight down the middle. And that helps to shape it. I don't know if you can see that. I'll do that a couple times. And if, if, if I don't feel that it's keeping its shape for whatever reason, then I can take my very small end and go over it, which I may do here. It looks like it should be keeping the shape on the back. It looks very dented, but on the front, it looks a little, let's see, that helped it a lot. So anyway, these are the paper tools that I use just to help give these some definition. I think they look much better instead of just a flat die cut. Now this one, because this is a layered shell, I'm going to roll this piece and I'm going to use my bone folder for that. I want to be careful that I don't crease it.
And then when I put it on here, I'm going to just glue the very edge on three sides. I'll glue this edge, along this edge, and along this edge. But before I do that, I'm also going to shape this piece. And again, I don't want it to crease. Looks really bad when you crease it. I know from experience. <laughs> so, and also if you shape them too much, then they don't want to, um, they don't want to meet and, and glue. So, now for these, um, for these that have a lot of dimension, you can see on this one, I think you can see where it's puffed out. I used the big knob on the front to give that depth. And that's what I will do on this piece here. Just following inside, oops, see I just tore it, darn it, no worries, I'll just cut another one and glue it on, because it'll be seen otherwise, and um, I'll just gently give this a little definition inside. So with this and this one, not this one, sorry. Hmm. No, not that one. Um, anyway, with this one and this one, once I get them where they fit well, then I will tuck a little foam square on the inside just to keep them from getting crushed down. But I want this edge to stay up, so I've got to lift that piece up a bit. Anyway, that's the gist of it. So I hope you give this a try. It's a lot of fun making the shells look realistic. And uh, it doesn't take long either, so give it a try. So I added a second piece onto the back since I had um, punctured it or tore it. And I glued the edges only to a point on this third side and then on the inside, I don't know if you can see that, but there are two little foam squares stacked just to keep it from getting crushed. And it's the same as what I did on this one. And um, on this one, I took my my big ball, I have bigger ones, but this is, these are the ones that I use. And I, this, this is the foam, a, a thick foam piece. And I just went around to push, push out the bottom. And I did the same with this piece. And that's how I tore it. But, um, and I also took the small piece and went around this, it kind of looks like an ear. But, but anyway, so that's what I did to give that definition. And then I took some crystal glaze and just covered over that lightly and then filled that in a bit. And I also took some crystal glaze, just lightly covered my clam shell. I don't know if you can see that. Um, anyway. I did. Maybe you can see that. But um, 
could have put some on the inside also, but you won't see it because it'll be glued down. So anyway, those are the shells. And these are the tools, just some thick foam, bone folder, and two paper tools. So here's the completed card. And I chose a sentiment from the Honeybee Stamps Seize the Day sentiment set. And I think it came out okay. I debated whether I should stamp it on white cardstock, uh, but I ended up going with the sand. And then I thought maybe I should stamp it in white, but uh, in the end I just kept it in the black. And I think it came out okay. And um, so that's the completed card. It's a lot of fun. Tunnel cards are always a lot of fun, especially for the recipient. So I hope you give it a try and try shaping your shells or any of your other die cuts that you, uh, that you do. And um, I hope you like the video. And if you do, if you did, please leave us a thumbs up and thank you for watching.